Cryptocurrency mining is something that everyone with a graphics card should be doing, and there are several reasons why. Whether you bought a graphics card primarily for gaming, video editing, or 3D modeling, you aren't doing these activities all day, every day. And that means your graphics card is sitting there unutilized when it could be making you passive income through cryptocurrency mining. During the last two years, the supply chain issues have wreaked havoc on the price of PC components, and in particular, graphics cards. However, in the last month, we've seen some relief with the prices dropping about 25% here in Australia. But the problem is they're still higher than MSRP. Through mining, you can bring down the cost of your GPU purchase in the short term, but in the long term, it'll make you more money than you initially invested. In essence, it can pay for the entire cost of your gaming PC or workstation. By using the NiceHash profitability calculator, you can check the current approximate income of your graphics card. Just enter the electricity cost in kilowatt hours and pick a graphics card from the list. In the case of my NVIDIA 3090, it's expected to make $4.97 per day after electricity costs. That means that in theory, with a purchase price of $3,059, I would make my money back in 615 days, which is a bit more than one and a half years. Keep in mind that this is based on the current profitability and this metric fluctuates. Therefore, the calculator should only be used for rough estimation. Are there any downsides to mining? In my opinion, there really aren't. Heat and noise problems are for large scale operations, but if you're just mining on one graphics card, this isn't a concern. In your area, you may have expensive electricity, which doesn't make it as viable as it could be. However, my electricity isn't that cheap either, and I'm still achieving awesome results. A lot of people will say that mining damages your GPU and hurts its resale value. Well, this has been proven to be complete bullshit, and it's likely a narrative propagated by GPU manufacturers to deter buyers from the secondhand market and drive sales of new cards. In a video by Linus Tech Tips, Linus compared graphics cards used in mining to their brand new equivalent. He found there was no impact on the performance of a card that had been mined on for four years. Conclusion, 1847 versus 1830, basically the same. Even if mining did degrade the performance of the card over time, I would argue that the card will lose value anyway as the next generation is released. So there's no point in babying it with the hope of retaining its value. It is a tool that is meant to be used. The mining landscape has evolved significantly since the early days of Bitcoin and technical expertise is no longer a requirement to get involved. With software like NiceHash QuickMiner, it has become extremely easy for anyone to start mining. Simply create an account with NiceHash and download their QuickMiner software. I'll provide the link in the description. After installing, you'll be prompted to insert your Bitcoin mining address. This can be found on the NiceHash mining dashboard as shown. And just like that, you're already mining cryptocurrency. The software will now let you configure a few more options, set a name for your mining rig, and choose whether you want the software to automatically launch on startup. At this point, I'm going to stop screen capturing because that does impact the mining performance and I just wanna show the most accurate numbers here. Therefore, I will be recording from my external camera. Uh, now that I got my card up and running with NiceHash QuickMiner, it's showing that with stock settings that the speed, the mining speed is 105 mega hash per second. Now, what you can do next, uh, which is very easy, you can apply some light overclocking. All you have to do is you come to your, uh, your dashboard and go to the rig manager. And down here, you'll see the computer that you just set up with the mining address. And you just come over to optimize and I recommend, uh, well, for my card at least, I could do high, no problems. And I've got a pretty compact case, you know, um, but I've got a good airflow in there. High runs, no problem whatsoever on here. So you can see that now I applied one of the presets here, the high preset, the speed is shot up from about 100 to 121 mega hash per second. That's about a 20% performance increase, which is pretty good. Now you might be perfectly happy with that, but one thing we can 
do is squeeze a tiny bit more juice out of it and also improve the efficiency. So the card will consume less electricity while uh, doing the highest hash rate. And we can do this by changing the setting here to manual. And then if you come down to the taskbar here, you'll see the nice hash icon in the tray. Right click that and click on to OC Tune. Now this is the uh, quick minor overclocking panel, basically. Uh, it just provides more options for overclocking your graphics card. Now, we are going to use here the alternative method for overclocking. Uh, as you can see, it's for 2000 and 3000 series NVIDIA cards, basically. And if you have a 10,000 series card, use the classic method of overclocking over here. Um, but the first thing you want to do is come to Optimize Profile, check this box, and we're just going to pre-fill uh, these fields here with the high settings. And this is like just a starting template because we know high is a setting that works. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is the memory clock. With core clock, you don't want to disable the limit. Uh, just leave it as it is because if you disable the limit, the card's going to probably overheat and we generally tune this setting after the memory clock. So with memory clock, what you wanna do is basically increase this value by 25 and then apply the overclock settings. And you can come up here, you see those settings have been applied and basically you just monitor the speed, you monitor here for hardware errors and you keep increasing this setting by 25 and applying it until you get hardware errors and then you back it off by 10 until there are no hardware errors. And then that's when you know you found the best, the highest possible memory clock that you can get on your card. Now, uh, for hardware errors, in my case, I was not getting anything showing up here on this table, but what I did get was the excavator console here. It was like closing down and restarting or the computer itself would just crash. So that's considered an error and you want to back off the memory clock setting um, when that occurs. In my case, I found that the setting of 10,975 was the best that I could get without any errors. I could go up to like 11,000 or just over, but after a few hours, I did find that uh, it would crash. So I backed it off until uh, that stopped happening basically. And yeah, now keep in mind this number, uh, we'll apply that. And then you wanna come back down here to this auto tune section. And basically you wanna make sure that your new memory clock value is put in here, 10,975. And basically this starting core clock and starting end clock value can stay the same and we want to tune it for the best efficiency. So we're going to be tuning the core clock and ensure that your card can get the highest speed while using the least amount of power, basically. So if you go start selected, it will begin testing all the values from 480 up to 1605. And basically you want to also probably disconnect the monitors from your GPU while you're doing that uh, because it can impact the results a little bit uh, and you want to just basically make sure that all your GPU resources are being uh, utilized by nice hash when conducting this test. So if you go start selected, basically you'll see, oh, start single, sorry, it's working now, you can see, and up here it will show you the results as it goes through each setting. And it's showing the efficiency here of those settings. But the one we wanna look at here is this KT UMED. And we wanna get this number down to the lowest number possible. So when the test is finished in like 10 minutes, uh, we will have a look at the results and find out what was the most efficient. So looking at these results, I'm liking these two options the best here and in particular this one. And the reason why is because the KTU med value is basically quite similar, uh, but this one has a higher Q 
kilohash per joule value, so 379.2. So obviously this one's better, getting better performance. Uh, and you can see these ones had a low value too, but uh, look, they're only 376, 377. And so, yeah, let's just go with this value. And basically we'll just punch this in 1170 and apply. So now these settings are running and we'll give it a minute or so to settle. But you can see here that in comparison to that stock high setting, I've already got a better speed. So previously it was like 121 mega hash per second. Now I'm getting 124. And based on my previous testing with this, I have it sits above 125 uh, and that's about as high as it'll go. One final thing to note about the core clock limit is that if you do find that the rig is crashing at some point uh, in the future, like it's running fine now, but uh, if you let it run for a few hours and you come back, oh, it's turned off, then I would increase this core clock limit a little bit. Um, so for example, just bump it up by 15 or whatever. I'm gonna put mine on 1200. And then hopefully it stabilizes it. Uh, I set this to fixed speed because like fan noise is not really an issue for me. So fixed speed, apply. And then the last thing you wanna do is come over here and just go save current configuration. And so when your computer restarts or when the software restarts, uh, it'll automatically load these tuned settings that we have just discovered. So yeah, now we're back in the rig manager and we can see that the speed is a bit higher. This is the highest it's been since we did the tuning in the OC tune page. But now going over to stats, you can see that basically um, it's doing here about $7.20 per day and it shows you your projected weekly income, projected monthly income, and projected yearly income. So yeah, this is gonna basically, these numbers fluctuate a little bit based on the current profitability, but you know, um, it works really well. Also, uh, when you need to use your graphics card, again, for say gaming or whatever, uh, the software, can automatically detect that you've launched a game and it will pause the mining, but I like to do it manually, um, particularly with other tasks that are not gaming, you might wanna do it manually. And all you have to do is come down here, click stop, and the mining will pause until you re-enable it. And so, yeah, you can utilize your graphics card and whatever task you're doing, but then when you finish, just start it up again and you can start earning BTC. So you can see here, I've got a wallet with, uh, about $100 in there. And you know, this has been going on and off for maybe like two weeks or something. Last time I cleared it out. Um, but what's cool is that they have a nice hash exchange built right in. So if you come up here, go to exchange and convert and you can just uh, basically we choose, we've got BTC and like, you know, I wanna put it into Bitcoin cash cause it's cheaper to withdraw or something. You just go and convert that and you can do it all in here. It's very easy and yeah, it's great that they got that sort of functionality built in for us. Well, that's all for this video and I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below and good luck with your crypto mining.